Howdy fine friends. I'm on the road this morning headed out to pick up some fence posts for our new paddocks that we're building out. Uh, we are going to build out a fence around our garden area for this year and also build a paddock for the pigs. And we saw a really good deal on Facebook Marketplace. So I am headed up a little northeast of us to pick up some good looking fence posts for a good price. Alrighty, got us a bundle of fence posts loaded up. They're just kind of some little three inch in diameter, just about, they taper off a little bit, about six and a half feet long. That'll be perfect for our uh, garden fence and to give uh, a paddock for our pigs to be in so that we can get them, uh, get them on some pasture. Uh, we're gonna use them to till up the garden spot for the rest of the winter and we sure are excited about that. So let's get on back to the farm now and uh, we may not unload these today, but we're gonna get on back to the farm and get started on another project. Taking out our garden plot, seeing how we want to do it. We've decided on 40 by 40, but we're gonna measure it out and I have some stakes to mark it. Yeah, safety first. Who you got in that Jeep with you? My dog lady. Your doggy lady. You open so you can hey lady. Hey you lady. Y'all gonna go for a ride? Yeah, and I have some snack and some extra water. Some snack and some extra water. That is excellent for a road trip. And I and me and lady, but she gets to snack with this too. Alright, well y'all have fun and be careful, okay? Daddy, can you can you um go down there with me. I'm gonna go down there. I'll meet you down there with you. Okay, baby doll, let's go down there. Can't go down the hill with chickens to get over, so gotta find Did the somewhere. chickens take over the hill? Yeah. Let's see if we can see how the chickens took over the hill out there. So I have plenty of room up there. Yep, the ducks way over there taking over. Yeah, they like to take over that. All so right. I have this bunch of land that we can circle. Yeah. Okay, well I'm gonna finish my chores, okay? Okay. Uh um you I'll meet you when your chores are done. I'll stay right I can I can drive through there while you're doing it. I can follow you with this. Okay, that sounds good. You can tell me where you're going. I'm just going right over there to do chicken chores. I'm gonna come with you. Okay, and duck go. chores, we need to water them, I think. Okay, we'll do the or duck chores too. Or give them food too. All right. I can see their food wet on. They need more food. Okay. Let's do this.
back at the house and I am checking on our seedlings. It has been two days since I started putting them under this uh, kind of makeshift grow shelf. So let's see how they're doing. This is Brussels sprouts, lettuce, dill, and basil. And every single cell has something coming up except for that one right there. And we may see some growth out of it yet. You can see that the Brussels sprouts back on this end uh, did get a little bit leggy before uh, I got this grow light set up going. Uh, but we will see what ends up happening. I have a feeling they're gonna be fine anyways. Um, and I'm just going to put this here. Uh, you can see I've got some cracks in these lids that they actually came in the mail like that. I talked to the folks at Haas and they immediately, same day, like within 15 minutes of me calling, had put replacements in the mail for me. And uh, so they came in the other day and I'm gonna put them, I'm gonna switch them out um, today. Let's see here. That one sort of growing upside down. All right, this one is our tomatoes. Uh, this row back is tomatoes of different varieties. This row right here is our long slim cayenne peppers. Uh, they have not come up yet. So we will keep monitoring that situation. The uh, mountain vineyard tomatoes are right here. They look like they may have gotten just a little leggy before we got them under the lights, but not too bad. Everything else looks awesome back here. You can see uh, everything's a little bit squattier and stouter and so we're hoping that that will continue so that uh, they get that good strong growth uh, early on. I haven't decided yet whether I'm going to uh, pinch back the extra sprouts or if I'm going to um, separate them out. We'll see in the next week or so uh, what I decide to do about that. Right now they're not really crowding each other, they're just growing alongside each other because uh, they're the most important growth is growing on beneath the surface as those roots start to uh, start to go down into those starter cells down here the most obvious growth look at that remember how I was worried about not soaking the bush beans well uh, they showed me they've already sprouted up um, as you can see those are four and five inch sprouts uh, at the biggest ones and so we'll see how that goes now that they're under the light. I may, I'm probably gonna find a way to get them actually under the this grow light because right now they're getting light from above still and that's probably why they're a little leggy. I may be able to push all of this over, turn that, there we go. That'll be perfect. Now maybe those beans won't try as hard. Um, the rest of the tray is our watermelons. Uh, we got our sweet crimson in these two rows, sugar baby watermelons in these two rows. Um, sugar baby is our favorite. Uh, crimson sweet's a little bit of a bigger variety than the sweet baby, the sugar baby, uh, so we can share those uh, at bigger gatherings if we're doing bigger gatherings by the time the summer rolls around. Over here, we've got some really good growth um, on plants that look similar, so uh, I'm assuming and checking the uh, the popsicle sticks over there. My assumption is correct. These are our zucchini and our squash. The back two rows are our zucchini. These two rows are our gold prize squash. And then these two rows right in here are the national pickling cucumbers that we are super excited about. You can see everybody in there looking like they're getting a healthy start. All right, let's take this last one off. We have no sprouts coming up in this one as of yet. This is our strawberries and our asparagus. Um, we will keep an eye on it. Hopefully it'll still be fine. 
It, it looks a little damper than what I wanted, and so I may leave the lid off for the rest of the day. Um, but it may just be taking them a little bit longer to germinate. So we'll see what goes, what happens here. We still have plenty of seeds of both of those things, the strawberries and the asparagus. So if they don't come up in the next few days, um, I may try. I've got another seed tray that I may put them in. But I am excited about this start. We've got some good stuff going on. I'm going to replace the lids that were cracked with the new lids that the awesome folks at Haas sent us immediately upon hearing that we had some troubles. They were very apologetic and sent replacements right away. And it's it obviously is not their fault if something gets broken. And so I was in the mail, and so I was super impressed by uh, their um, their decision to uh, reach out to us so quickly and send us replacements. Um, that was awesome. So thank you, folks at Haas. Uh, Greg signed the email, so uh, thanks, Greg. Starting to get a little dark on us today, but it's been a good day. It's been filled with with stuff that we needed to get done uh, that we couldn't do during the week. Uh, we are kind of weekend warriors a lot of the time since we, uh, Jacqueline has a full-time job, I have a full-time job. Uh, we run a small business under the name of the farm where we do um, our uh, hatchery but also web consulting uh, and design. Um, also I have a, a part-time pastoral charge at Forest Lake United Methodist Church in Tuscaloosa and so we are just constantly busy never mind having a five-year-old right uh, but we love it we, we love our life it is a charmed life that we lead um, but we got some important stuff done wanted to show y'all something before I head inside uh, something that I'm excited uh, to get to work on it, it may be a couple of weeks before I get to work on this project but the other day I was at our local Lowe's picking a couple of things up and every time I go over there I have to go out to the garden center and just see what's going on out there even in the dead of winter sometimes you find good stuff and I did they aren't the best but they had all of these blackberry starts uh, these one gallon starts in uh, on a clearance rack so I got all these things for a uh, dollar each something like that three dollars each three dollars each that's what it was sorry uh, so a total of, of ten plants for thirty bucks look even if it never works out it's worth the shot right so uh, that's about the price of a of a lottery ticket in Georgia I think so uh, maybe we'll win the lottery with these blackberries and they'll be something we can enjoy for years to come uh, but if not it'll be all right but we will be trying to get those in the ground sometime soon oh my goodness can y'all see how pretty this is out here man it is absolutely beautiful out here this evening anyways Jacqueline and I are about to finish up some outdoor chicken chores and feed the uh, the pigs get the ducks put up for the night and then we're gonna go inside and we are gonna do one more thing before we wrap this video up before y'all are done with us today so stick around One last project for the day. I watch a lot of YouTube and my favorite channels to watch are channels about people who are doing something that they enjoy do, doing that happens to leave the world a better place than when they found it. I especially love gardening channels and homesteading channels and farming channels, channels where people get to work with their hands because there's something about a seed and what comes from 
the work that people put in, especially with regenerative farming and gardening, that just makes me happy. Something that gives me hope. To see someone put work into something and be able to watch it grow. For years in my role as a pastor, I've talked about seeds. Most of the world's major religions focus in on agricultural metaphors to talk about uh, the kingdom of God or talk about the world around us and how we can make the world a better place. And I really think that that's the truth. We can plant many different types of seeds in the world around us. We can plant seeds of happiness and joy. We can plant seeds of hatred and violence. We can plant seeds of love. And as we plant our seeds, I truly believe we can watch those seeds grow into something great, something destructive, something constructive, something that can change the world. Someone who seems to share this point of view and also a love for gardening is uh, someone that I find myself watching at least a couple of times a week, Scott Head, with, uh, let me make sure I get it, Black Gumbo Southern Gardening. And he has started up a single seed challenge. And it's not a challenge where you challenge another YouTuber or content creator or social media person or person in general to a contest. Instead, we join together as a community to challenge ourselves as individuals, as families, as a community, as the world, to take time to focus in on something as small as a seed, a single seed. Scott has made um, references to the fact that we often plant a large garden and we focus in on the rows or the beds themselves and we think of things as a, a garden as a whole or a bunch of broccoli or a bunch of tomato plants, a bunch of cucumber plants, but we rarely focus in on the single seed and watch the beauty of that one seed flourishing and living and growing and perhaps even bearing fruit. And so Scott has challenged his viewers and the gardening community on YouTube to come together in this challenge, this single seed challenge. And he's done it for two years already, and I'm going to join in this year. So the single seed challenge 2022, uh, and we are going to take time to focus in on a single seed. We're going to watch it grow. I hope that we will watch it grow to be a big, fruitful plant. Perhaps we can even save some seeds from this plant and continue on watching what has come from this one little seed through the years as we use those heirloom seeds each and every year. That's at least what I'm hoping for here. So, um, I've chosen a seed. And this seed is going to represent for us love that we put into the world, good vibes, if that's your thing, positivity that we put into the world, these seeds that we plant whenever we do something for a person, uh, for a community, for a loved one, a friend, maybe a stranger, that plants the seed of happiness, of joy, of peace, of love. That's what this seed will represent this year. And maybe I won't mess it up and we won't be talking about the death of that seed of love. So uh, what we're going to try and do this year is we're going to plant one of these mountain vineyard tomato seeds. That's what I'm going to do now. Um, now, this is not the conventional seed that I would typically plant for this challenge um, for a couple of different reasons. First things first, Oh, I just lost the seed, so let's get another one out of here. First things first, this seed is a pelleted seed, so it's not pretty. Can you see that? It's not the pretty picturesque tomato seed that you would think of. It's not what you would think of when you think of a seed. Um, also, um, a tomato plant doesn't get very big, especially a smaller variety like the Mountain Vineyard. Uh, it doesn't get all that big, um, and so it's not going to be this great big tree. Uh, there's a very good chance that we won't save, that we won't get to save seeds from it, or that seeds from it won't grow, or 
Uh, it won't be the right variety to be the same. It's just not what you would think of when you think of a good sturdy seed to start uh, to follow over a long time. But I think that's what makes it perfect. We're going to plant this seed that's unconventional, that doesn't even look like a seed right now. And we are going to see that even though we don't think of it as something that could be big and beautiful and powerful, we'll see it grow. We'll see it bear fruit. And we'll remember that even on days when we don't feel like we can make much of a difference or we don't feel like we've got the right stuff to change the world around us in a better way, that if this plant can change our minds about what a seed should be and how a plant should, uh, should act and grow, then maybe, just maybe, we can change our minds about ourselves and we can see the fruit of our labor, the fruit of our love and happiness and joy and peace that we spread around growing in the world around us. So here we go. Let's plant this seed together. I'm gonna make my little hole right here and my potting mix. Here we go. Here is to a year full of joy, happiness, peace and love that we together nourish to make the world a better place. Farm friends, thanks for hanging out with us today. Uh, we got a lot of stuff done. I know uh, you didn't get to see a whole lot of it, but you got to run with me up to uh, the Birmingham area to get those posts and you got to uh, see our sprouts and how our garden's doing. You got to see us measuring off our garden and got to see some of the animals today. Um, I hope that you enjoyed yourself. If you did, hit the subscribe button. Stick around. See what else we're going to be doing on the farm sometime soon. Like the video if you want. Um, oh, leave us a comment. Let us know what your favorite part of the video was or what you'd like to see on the farm in the future. But most of all, we hope that you will uh, have a great day. Uh, have a great week. Uh, have a great year with us that this video has been a seed of happiness, joy, love, peace. Go in peace and love. Have a great day. See you guys.